in the name of Allah. In this lecture, we will talk about the phenomenon of the Ferranti effect and its relation to the increase in the values of electrical losses. We talked earlier and said that the passage of alternating current through any conductor results in the creation of an alternating magnetic field. And this alternating magnetic field causes the appearance of inductance, L. This is with respect to the current. As for the voltage, and as we said earlier, the presence of a voltage difference between any two conductors creates an electric field between them, and we must know that the electric field causes the appearance of capacitance, C. Therefore, inductance L is related to the magnetic field created by the electric current, whereas capacitance C is related to the electric field created by the voltage difference. Now let us focus together on the topic of capacitance C. Of course, everyone knows that a capacitor consists of any two conductors or two metal plates separated by an insulating material. Naturally, the presence of a voltage difference between any two conductors separated by an insulating material causes the voltage difference to store electric charges in the insulating medium or the dielectric material. Of course, the amount of electric charges stored in the insulating medium is equal to Q, which is the product of the voltage difference V and the capacitance C. We understand from this that the amount of stored charge, which is Q, is directly proportional to the voltage difference V. This means that if the voltage difference increases, the amount of electric charges stored in the insulating medium will also increase. Of course, transmission lines can be either overhead lines or underground cables. Everyone knows that overhead transmission lines act as self-capacitances, meaning, as we see here, that between any two conductors, there is air, and air is naturally an insulating material. The ground, however, must be understood as a conductive material. Therefore, due to the presence of a voltage difference between the conductors or between the phases, this voltage difference causes the storage of electric charges in the insulating medium or dielectric material in the overhead lines, which is air. As we said before, the amount of these electric charges is the product of the voltage difference and the capacitance, C. However, we must know that the value of capacitance C depends on the dimensions and the distance between the phases or conductors in the overhead lines. Now, are the self-capacitances present only in overhead lines? Certainly not, because we know that underground cables are also used for electrical power transmission. As we see here, the cable also acts as a capacitor, and therefore the cable can store electric charge in the insulating medium, as is clear in the image before us. Also, Q equals C times V. However, we must understand a very important point. The value of capacitance, C, also depends on the type of insulating material. This means that if the insulating material is air, the value of capacitance will be different than if the insulating material is XLPE, as in the case of the cables shown in the image before us. Therefore, we must know that the value of capacitance C in cables is about 10 times or tenfold greater than the value of capacitance C in overhead lines. This is a very serious problem if an overhead line is replaced by an underground cable without paying attention to the value and issue of capacitance C for the cable. So we have understood that there is capacitance C present between the phases or conductors of overhead transmission lines or underground cables, as well as between these phases or conductors and the ground. But what is the problem caused by the presence of this capacitance? C. We must know that this capacitance C exists along the entire length of the transmission line, whether it is an overhead line or underground cables, and they are connected in parallel with each other. This means that it is like a group of capacitors connected in parallel along the length of the transmission line. Since they are connected in parallel, their total equivalent capacitance at the end of the transmission line is like a very large capacitor. So, what is the problem with having a very large value of capacitance C at the end of the transmission line? We must understand that the problem of high capacitance C or the presence of capacitance C with a very large value has a significant effect, especially during light loads. This means that a large capacitance C causes a very high amount of reactive power at the end of the transmission line. The presence of such a high reactive power at the receiving end causes a significant increase in the voltage value as well. In other words, the voltage at the end of the transmission line is higher than its value at the beginning of the transmission line. And this is known as the Ferranti effect. Therefore, the Ferranti effect 
is the phenomenon of voltage rise at the receiving end of the transmission line to a value higher than the sending end or the source voltage. As mentioned, this phenomenon occurs during light load conditions. It should also be noted that the Ferranti effect is much more pronounced in cables compared to overhead lines because, as we said, the capacitance in cables is about 10 times higher than that in overhead lines. Here, the problem of voltage rise appears, especially at the end of the transmission line, which leads to the appearance of corona losses. The reason is that the high voltage at the end of the line means a high voltage stress on the insulators of overhead lines, transformers, loads, and all electrical equipment. As we discussed before in the study of corona losses, the high voltage on the transmission line causes partial discharge in the air or insulation, which defines the limits of the corona phenomenon. The same applies if the voltage at the end of the transmission line becomes very high. It will cause damage and deterioration of transformer insulation and partial discharge inside the transformer oil, resulting in corona inside the transformers and consequently a significant increase in losses. Therefore, the only solution or the best method to treat and reduce the problem of voltage rise at the end of the transmission line is to avoid the occurrence of the Ferranti effect by connecting a shunt reactor at the receiving end of the transmission line. The main function of installing a shunt reactor is to absorb or consume the excess reactive power. Of course, reducing the amount of reactive power means lowering the voltage value, and thus we can avoid the voltage rise. By doing so, we prevent the occurrence of the corona phenomenon or the limits of partial discharge on the overhead line insulators, transformers, and other electrical equipment. Consequently, this leads to a significant reduction in electrical losses. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next lecture.